Hey, Fitzy here, back at the game with another one. I have a hood here now that come off a 71 AMC Matador. The problem that we're having with the hood is that every time you close the hood, the hood started to kink right uh, where the hinges are mounted on the hood. So what I went and did is I went ahead and I made two reinforcer plates to fix the problem. Stick around. All right, what we got here is the hood off a 71 Matador. Uh, it's a typical early 70s, late 60s type of issue that goes wrong with these hoods. If you're ever familiar with them, a uh, car that's not used a lot or stored or been parked for a lot of years, opening and closing the hood, the hood hinges had a tendency to seize up on them. And uh, what ended up happening with this one here, as you can see, is after kinking it, you can hear a look at it and see. It is a, an actual low spot there. There's a kink across that there. This has been repaired before, you can see it. And I was up doing adjustments on this hood, fitting it on the car. Uh, and uh, this here ended up happening again. I straightened it up, and then we bolted the hood on and kinked again. So uh, the problem you got is that it's just gonna keep doing it. So what we need to do, this metal here is 20 gauge metal. The inner structure this is here. Once that happens once, it's kind of hard to fix it, okay? Uh, in terms of just trying to straighten up. You can cut this out, weld new pieces in there and do it all. But the problem I got with that is that these holes, these studs are in a, in a location for this to line up right. I don't want to disturb two of them. Now, I did notice when I bolted the hood on and I adjusted the rear hinge, I could lower the hood to the point that the back of the hood was too low, okay? So I know for a fact that I could build this up a bit in order to fix the problem and still have adjustment that the hood won't be high in the back. So the plan is here, first of all, is I gotta pull this up. I'm just gonna make a little jig to put a knot on that, pull that up back in place again. And then I'm gonna make a plating system that'll go over this here, the hinge go went to about here, right? And uh, I'm gonna build a plating system to go up to here. And the plating system is just gonna be Spot welded on, it's going to be dressed around thing. I'm not going to weld it on solder or nothing like that because it's just going to get into fill and all this and you don't want to do it. I'm going to make this sort of a plating system for reinforcement. Much the same as something like this. See the way this is done? This is just for bump stops. It's a plate welded on. It's going to have an edge on it like that. I'm going to dress it up so it looks nice. And then I'll spot weld it on and I'll spot weld it around each of the hinge bolt locations. And it'll roll over this edge here to give it strength and it'll round the edges off and everything like that make it look nice But the reasoning for that is I want to give a strength to it and also I'm going to make this piece out of 16 gauge metal and uh, Make it stronger than the 20 gauge metal This is what I got here no more scrap of this. I have a lot of this kicking around holds on to a lot of stuff over the years and uh, Anyway, so I'm going to cut out a few pieces there now what I'm going to do here first is the problem we're going to have is getting these two holes lining up perfect get them in the, in the position so all i'm going to do is i'm going to cut a big piece like so that's going to be too big i'm going to make these two holes and have it sort of slips onto that so i can bolt it onto it okay then i'm going to make the length of it and the width of it and line it all up because there's no good on making the entire panel first and then trying to make these holes then you'll be oblong and holes trying to line everything up and whatnot so i'm going to do these two holes first and then make the panel after and make shape the panel after so here's all I went and did I took a rough measurement I measured that there and gave it a little bit like you measure from there to there so I went off the bit on both sides and I said roughly four inches and then I took the length of it and I went way up there and come down here I said 14 inches so now I got a big enough piece there so what I went come over here and I cut out the piece that's four inches by 14 then by laying this right here in the center again, you will see roughly that that's about an inch and a half to that bolt hole, okay? So then I came over here and I drew an inch and a half here, inch and a half here, and drew a straight line, and now that was my offset. And all I did then is I measured from here to here. And I come up with uh, six inches exactly.
a six inches center to center. I'm going to come over here and I marked it six inches. All I did is I come up on the end here about two inches because I knew I had lots of overhang and I put that mark there and then I measure from there up to here six inches and a hole punch tube. I'm going to drill two of them now and see how, what they're like. I just drilled two one eight holes. I always start with them. And then just to be safe, I laid them on top of a second piece and lined them up the corners and edges here and I just uh, marked it with the drill bit down through the other holes. Hard to see there. One there. Yeah, one there. And one there. And so just in case I know then if this one works out okay, I can just come over and duplicate it on that one because you can drill the hole with the one eighth. Eh? Now I'm going to go up to a quarter bit and see how it fits. As you can see, I did really well on that one. I just got to upsize this a bit now, so I'm going to use a step drill and just start taking it up one size at a time because I like to have a tight fit on this, right? Just one more notch on the step drill and I had it. It works perfect there now. I got that in place. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over and I'm going to drill the other one out and get that fit first before I go any further. So I got two of them cleaned up and fitting on there. Right, clean up the metal. Always clean up your metal first. If we do any more, uh, any shaping or anything to them. So what I went and did here now is over here. You can look and you can see uh, this here is on a bit of an angle going along here. So I marked it here and I marked it here, and then I laid this in place. And then I went ahead and I marked it along there. So I'm gonna cut this one off, check it, see what it fits like, and I'm going to put the same mark on that one there and cut that off as well. As I did, cut on an angle, so because it's shaped like that there now, so that'll end off there. And done the same thing over here. I just laid this one on top of this one. So I, that's how I marked it. I flipped it upside down, laid it on there, and I cut it off. That's all I did. So now that I got that the back cut off, I must find out the overall length. You can see there seems like there's some filler work or something's been done on this before, and this is where the end of the hinge went. So I'm gonna want to come up here a little small bit, probably this mark here. I'm gonna mark it. And cut that one off and then duplicate it over on that one. I gotta cut off the length that I want. Take this off here. Down over here, and you can see now it's gotta be cut off. So I'll mark that there now. Right where's that? And chop that piece off. Now, up until this point, you've been noticing that I got a bigger piece made here, and you're saying, but you know, this is just flat. This is gonna wanna bend again if you leave it flat. Now, here's the reason why I made it wider. What I want to do here is if you can see, this here rolls off this way and it rolls off this way. What I want to do is I want to make the panel stronger by rolling it off this edge here. So this will come down around this edge here and come down around this edge here. When you put edges on sheet metal, it gives it more strength. So by rolling over these edges here on both sides, uh, you'll end up making it stronger. So I went ahead and I marked it just prior to the two rolls and so I flipped it over and I marked it so I can bend it. So I'm going to go over and bend this. Now I would like for it to be a nice roll on it and in this, in my break, it might, uh, because it's heavier steel, it should give me enough roll. So I'm just going to roll this over, bend it over and see what it looks like. I got them bent at a 90 degree angle. I know they're not going to be 90 because I'm going to roll them back again. But what I got to figure out now is how wide do I want them here. Okay? So I'll come over here and you can look and you can see, probably see it better on this one over here. Yeah. You can see this comes down about three quarters of an inch or so down here. And then this side here is not as much. This is only about a quarter of an inch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off both ends to the width that I like the firm to be. So that way I know I can start working it to fit down over this here. 
Okay, I got both sides trimmed off. So now I'm going to start dialing it and fit it in place. Now I've dialed it a few times, changed the view angles, getting it all made, but as you can see, the way it flows over the edge there, the way it flows over the edge there, I'll dolly that a bit more and then dress up these edges, round them up, dress the this up, and I'll finish this one right off so I can see what it looks like and uh, make it look presentable looking. And what I'm going to do then is I'll spot weld this around the bolt holes and around here and up here and a few on the sides here just to give it strength to hold everything in place same with here but when it's finished all it will be is just a plating system on top of it this is what you're left with fits right on over it rounds right off on the front around the sides rolls over the edge here rolls over the edge here fits down over the studs and what I'll do now is I'll turn around and I'll plug weld this around the bolts here and I'll plug weld it up here and I'll probably put a couple along here as well to give it strength and on the sides and then I'll dress all that up so that uh, it'll just look like a, a panel that's been just mounted to the thing for reinforcement so I'll go ahead now and make the other one now and get them ready to install okay one mistake I made okay I went and trimmed off both sides like I did I did it on the other one I never showed you but I'm going to show you on this one here uh, you saw me in the brake bending up two bends um, on the thing when I got a fit in place I found this bend wasn't in the right location I'm the same as the other one I ended up having to flatten it back out again because the problem I had was where I marked it to it didn't seem to want to fit right. now that I got a fit back on there better now I can roll this edge the second time so in hindsight uh, you should only do one bend first and then do this one after the fact it was too hard to do both at the same time because you didn't know exactly the width there's always a problem when you're bending metal uh, especially when it's thicker, if you bend it too far on this side of the line or on the line, it rolls it back into the panel more and then it ends up having a narrower top section on it, right? But I figured I'd point that out because it, I made it look pretty easy, but it wasn't. I end up having to flatten this edge out and now I'll mark it again. I'll start to roll that with a T-dolly. Now if you look here, you can actually see where I marked it, where I had it bent before, and then I rolled it. I had to move it out about this much to roll the edge on it. As you can see, that line was on the flat side, and I had to be on this side of the line. When I bent it before, it went bent from there, and it's supposed to bend from out here. But it was an easy fix. I got it all straightened away now. So now I'm going to dress that one up like the other one. So I got the tube, man, laid in place. Quite pleased with them. Nice and strong. Bring them over here, and one of the hardest things you can ever do is try to make uh, two of them the same. But I uh, did a pretty good job of that. Make two of them identical. Yeah, I play around a bit here and there. So now what I'm going to do is how to uh, prep these, drill a few spot wells, and prep it up, and prep that up, and get a painted, so I can get this here installed. Uh, one thing you know, like I said before, like strength comes in the angles, okay? When you put angles on metal, the strength there. Like this is really strong now. That's a very strong piece, right? Uh, that there used to bend the hinge there. So now when I weld all this on, the strength will be in this bracket here. And this is a lot stronger than what it was from factory. But uh, like we got the hinges all on seas and everything is just that. This is after folding the hood a couple of times, so this metal here is extremely weak. Uh, some might think just cut the piece out, weld a new piece in there and flush mount it. Problem you got is trying to make these bolts in the same location. 
then you got all that welding on the inside and everything trying to weld all that up and then you're doing all this here filling all this area around here and I never likes filling around the hinges all I just like heaving it bare metal like we'll dress up that piece of metal and prime it and sand it and that should be brand new right but uh, I'll get this all prepped here now you can see here how much lower that is go along there see how much it's bent up all I did was took a piece of angle iron drilled two holes in it so it fits over the bolts you can see like this flush there and it's flush down there but right here look that's a bit of an angle there what I'll do now is I'll just tighten up that bolt and draw it up so this comes up so it's level So all I did is I turn around and I crank that up and I pulled it up. Now it's all level again there now. Pretty good. There is a small crown on the entire panel because it is a uh, thing. But it is back up where it should be. So now that panel is ready to go. And I come over here and I've done the same thing over here. And I made, uh, I pulled it up here a little bit as well. So I'm going to prep all this now and get ready so I can weld these on. So I went ahead and I primed. The, the hood, cleaned it all off, buzzed it off, and I primed the bottom side of these, and then I marked for all the spot welds on this here, and I just knocked the head off them, so that you can just actually just take that down, put that right place there now, and then I'll weld up them spot welds. Did the same thing over here, marked it all up, got the panel all ready, turn around, fit it on and now, and I'll put two bolts in these here and tighten them up, and then weld all that up. So all you did, I just clamped it in place, bolted it down, and then I just spot welded all the spot welds. And then when I got all that done, I went and grinded up all the spot welds. So then you don't see like nothing is done. Now it's just a plating system that's added to the hood. It's permanently part of it. And then when you paint a body color and everything, it'll just look like a uh, factory stall plate that was added on those. So I'm going to go finish off that other one there now. So there's two of them. All welded in place and dressed up. They're permanently now part of the car. And they're nice and dressed to be, you know, all you gotta do is prime that, sand it a few times, and you'll be fine. And, uh, you know, you do a nice job filling it. You haven't got to worry about filling it or nothing, because that'll only crack around there. You go fill any of that, and the nice strength is there. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna prime two of these again now. And I'm gonna take a run up, and we're gonna bolt them on the car and see how they fits. Open up. Close it down. Brand new. This is a car a lot of my friend Jeff is a 71 uh, Matador and he's making a machine out of us. Matador machine. Uh, he got a 390 four speed going in his eight three quarter Dodge in it. Roll cage in it, street machine type thing. You know, got that real 70s vibe. Uh, I've often talked about good from the door handles down. This car here was good from the door handles down. No, I always said good from the door handles up. This one was one was good from the door handles down. Rockers and all that was good on the floors. All that was minted. This one here was a vinyl top car. Okay, and this entire drip rail was non-existent along here. Uh, this here is a drip rail off a Dodge van that I modified to fit the, the car. I had to make all this section here. A little bead in through here uh, these windshield posts here they're from a 68 javelin we got them put in there because all this was rot out of it uh, this is from a rebel machine a 69 rebel machine the top section of the roof here because we wanted to put all that section out there like both windows front and back windows was the same way uh, all this in around here was completely gone all along here completely rotted out I'm gonna show you pictures of that of how bad it was but uh, I ended up replacing this is a car I done this back in 2006 and he's had it in storage now and he's only now getting back at it so that was this was the last of it I had to do with it to get the metal uh, get all the panels fitting 
Well, let's go to the machine when it's going to be done. A little custom made spoiler we made for it. Amazing. All factory floors. None's been tampered with in this car. Uh, I had to make a four-speed box for it for the the shifter. And uh, of course get the roll cage in her, six-point roll cage. It's gonna be a nice car when it's done. It's got a lot of parts for this car. And she's going she's going white uh, with the rebel stripes on the side of her. And he also painted the hood blue, so she's going to look like a rebel machine, but uh, it's going to be a matador machine. That's an eight three quarter Dodge with all the AMC bracketry mounted to it. So she's the original coil spring. She still retains all her factory mounts, but instead of the, uh, the AMC rear end, she's got the big old Dodge rear end in her. That's an original scoop of a rebel machine that uh, we managed to locate here locally. It was a front off a local car uh, that ended up being rusted out and was gone. And this is one of the only pieces left from the car. So it was pretty cool to find that. Someone had this bolted on, a, I think it was a 68 LTD <laughs> when we found it. We knew what it was. He got the tech and everything for it. Oh. Anyway, that's it for that. And uh, all of it fits good. It's not too high. I didn't even have to do no adjustments on the hinges. And the gaps and everything are good. And everything bolted up. There was nothing in the way. So <clears throat> there's a quick little reinforcement plates that I made for uh, Jeff's Matador. Anyway, that's it for this one. I hope the tips are good. And until next time. <laughs>